be it has leaked a little maybe by the time i get home it will be the pad will be swollen so i'm like okay let's go by the time we got to half our destination we are getting off the first matatu or the first bus i just had something fall i felt Gosh. as if something is falling and you know it's so big and the way it's falling it's not just falling like meat it's falling and then there is a splash of blood not coming out have you ever felt like you have organized what do we call it what? organized sex mm -hmm. like at this time yeah this so the game huh? tells you on wednesday at 12 45 mm -hmm. we need to be doing really? it really so my husband wherever he is and wherever i am we know that by 12 20, 45 we should it's be like there okay so how did it happen that now you got pregnant three weeks three months ago yeah no that is 10 years down the line 10 years later i mean if your periods are different they're not the normal way just consult your gain on time hello and what's up guys welcome or welcome back to my channel it's me felicity and thank you thank you so much guys for tuning in uh today it's not uh the kind of ordinary video mezoya you know fun and all that guys you get it today i'm here with a friend and uh, she's here to tell us a story it's not just a story but it's um a very interesting story she has about her life and uh Maybe she's just going to introduce herself and uh, tell us exactly why she's here, just to make you guys understand before we continue with the video. Hi guys, I'm Pauline of Mokazi Family. That's my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yep. Wana kujua? Sana. <laughs> you know me. So many people tell me, oh Pauline, why don't you do video with Ferris? Really? Um, yeah. When I dropped my first video of pregnancy, uh -huh. so many people were telling me, why don't you do a, hey, why? Like, a comparison video of you and Felicity uh -huh. now you're pregnant? And I was like, I'm doing, I'm doing. No, I even stopped telling them I'm doing, no, I keep quiet. Mm. Yeah. So guys, as you've heard, she's Pauline Mwakazi. Uh, she's a friend, a neighbor, yeah. and all that, guys. There is a few videos we've done together, but I think Niza Kitambo. Mm -hmm. So maybe you guys can scroll look of chini kabisa like last year <laughs> last Lini, yeah. and maybe you can you can go and check out what we did yeah. so as of today you're here to tell us uh something about endometriosis mm -hmm. and my pregnancy journey really yes so, so what is endometriosis mm -hmm. so endometriosis is the embryo that it grows inside the uterus you understand mm -hmm. it doesn't grow outside so mine was growing outside so that's when you are when you're having your period it just comes like normal mm -hmm. and then it goes but mm -hmm. mine was worse it would come like today goes tomorrow and then after like a day or so it's back your period yes uh -huh. and it, it was so painful mm -hmm. even you can't enjoy sex it was it's just like fibroids mm -hmm. but this one it spreads you know fibroids just grows on the ovaries it uh, it affects the eggs, eh? but not this one. It eats the intestines, the stomach, right. uh -huh. the eggs. It can even go all the way to your heart and everything. If you really? have ever seen, yeah, if you have ever seen the story of this lady who is called Jambi, the one who was admitted, who was taken to the U.S. because of um, the endometriosis story. I don't so many think people I have know. that. Yeah, so by then so many women have <coughs> yeah, that. But even story for Kambua, story yeah, for Kinakona, very Zonkoluka, many. Yeah, they had endometriosis. So it's com it's something that's common. It's common for women, uh -huh. especially if you're active, sexually mm -hmm. active, that is, mm -hmm. and you don't give your own that chance to be pregnant. Uh -huh. It starts spreading. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's uh, a it's kind of a yellow. It's like a fat, fatty thing that starts building up around the body so it goes to the intestines it consumes the intestines you're left with no intestines it consumes, consumes. your eggs yeah what do you mean? like you see like how can i explain i want to give a name i want to give i want to explain it like a three-year-old mm -hmm. you see like the mogumo tree yeah how it finds another tree and it's 
entangles mm-hmm. itself and yeah, that yeah, trick, yeah. that's endometriosis Gosh, now. That's scary. Yes, it is. So you are here <coughs> to tell us about um maybe how it it all started. Yes. To where uh, to that point where you got pregnant with the she's how many weeks or months postpartum? Um, no, um three months. Three months postpartum. Yeah. Yeah. So she's here to tell <coughs> us the whole of that story. Maybe she can inspire women out there who have the same condition and uh, maybe in between all that she has a uh, you are going to be too interesting to to be a hope yes yeah, sana. <laughs> sana 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 yeah so guys back all up as we start this and uh now you can tell us where it all began from okay yeah okay being this uh townish girl mm-hmm. like someone who wants to do modeling slave queen, queen. Uh-huh. Slave queen uh-huh. you know uh-huh. so i was almost walking naked everything <laughs> because i want to be famous uh-huh. so guys uh, i would um how many years ago are, are, are you talking about? I'm old, you know. Mm. <laughs> I can't remember the, the years back, but it's, I'm old. Mm-hmm. So once I was in high school, college and everything, I would love to contest for this Miss Miru, Miss whatever mm-hmm. thing, to yeah. be famous. And I loved that because I love catwalking so much. I still today do. So once I got to college, mm-hmm. I came to the race, there's something happening to me. Like my periods could come, it would be like water, you know. It's so thin, it's not heavy, watery. it's watery, and then it comes a lot. What? Okay. So I came to the race, <clears throat> once I take alcohol, my period goes away. So I could take uh, alcohol anytime I have my period, so because I didn't like periods, there's no woman who loves yeah, to have a period. Yeah, of course, you know? yeah, but still at the <clears throat> same time you want it. You want it, because <laughs> if you don't get your periods, you know you're pregnant. Yeah. So it happened like that until, until it got to some point, I discovered something else. Mm-hmm. If I take concentrated salt, I would still mm-hmm. not have my period. With some water. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'll take a glass of water, half of it, and then put the large tablespoon. And then take it. So they don't come at all they at go all? Missing. If they had started, they just clear. What? That's it. Mm-hmm. So it happened like that. So I thought it was a good thing to do. I didn't know it's going to harm me or anything, mm-hmm. so I used to do it like continuously or do that. Uh-huh. So I finished college and I now came out here now looking for a job and everything. Telling you that I was a model, I used to go for these functions. I would be called where modeling is happening. People are contesting. We have an event. We have showcasing clothes, uh, showcasing carpets. It's called the red carpet. Yeah, yeah. So I would go and would do bikini wear. So it happens that I have periods. So what do I do? Well, in a bikini? Yeah. Contesting? Yes. Uh-huh. So I decided, ah, I don't want to take salty water and I don't want to take alcohol because I need to be sober. Mm-hmm. I'm having that six-inch shoe so I can't drink and walk on that six-inch shoe. Mm-hmm. So what I'll do, I was told by a friend there are pills that people use for to stop, to your, stop periods. your periods. So I had to take that one. So when I left home, I'd taken salt. So when I went out, I passed by the pharmacy and I bought a pill and I took Wait, it. Wait, and did you uh, did it ever maybe occur to you that uh, by the fact maybe you take alcohol, uh, ama maybe the salt, mm-hmm. and your period just stop? Mm-hmm. Was it like something that's normal? Okay, for me, you know that time you're so naive, you mm-hmm. don't want that part of it. Mm-hmm. So for you, it was like a plus. So mm-hmm. I didn't care if it's normal oh, or not normal because yeah, yeah. I was like I was naive. So, mm-hmm. but that's something you're discovering, you know. Yeah. But now when I don't take those things, my period would come back like water, a flash of water. Mm-hmm. So okay. that would pass. And now when now I got married to my first person, engaged to my first man, I was so scared because I knew I'm going to get pregnant. Engaged, engaged. Yes, yeah, I was will engaged. you marry me? Yeah, <laughs> when was you that? were even in the verge of being married. <laughs> when but was that? Story for another day. Okay, that okay. is uh, back in 20, 2016. Like, no, not your current husband? No, okay. My ex was Amzungu. Mm-hmm. My current mm-hmm. is an African. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of mm-hmm. my current. <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. so I know that I'm going to get pregnant because you know, dealing with whites was different. You yeah, can yeah. start telling them about protection and all these kind of mm-hmm. things yeah you know what it's how they are 
don't so for me oh you don't mm-hmm. poly mm. the whites are like that so they like when you you do things their way the western mm, way okay so for me it was like one day i had to say i'm pregnant and the girl was like how can you be pregnant and you i just did it once so i was so tense so i was preparing my mind what if i get pregnant but now with that condition of drinking salt drinking alcohol so mm-hmm. that i don't have my periods and blah 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 that thing was helping me so fast forward after that now i got my husband and now have you ever seen where you meet a guy for the first time and you smash no protection and you're like oh my god what if i get pregnant Mm -hmm. and you don't get pregnant the second month you don't get pregnant Mm -hmm. and i'm like what if i get pregnant are you going to take care of my (laughs) my baby and Mm -hmm. the guy is like yeah because i'm serious i want to marry you you're already my wife Mm -hmm. because we met the first day we married the first day so okay so for me i was scared of getting pregnant for Mm -hmm. a guy that i don't know just yet you don't know him at all exactly yeah so i was so nervous so we started i started becoming comfortable so even if i get pregnant it's he okay will be responsible yeah. the way i've known him he's not that kind of a person who will like jump a pregnancy mm-hmm. so i was so comfortable so one month two months three months four months and i'm like what we don't use protection i don't use any type of family planning nothing is nothing happening. is happening and i'm like okay what's happening then so now, during like uh this few months mm-hmm. did you ever like uh have your periods yes i was having my period but you were still stopping them no mm-hmm. they were so painful mm-hmm. that time i wanted to be clean no you that didn't is want not to do all you know that. Uh-huh. the time i was a runway girl yeah i would do all that too to be out and do all my things okay but now this this is a guy who wants a serious woman mm-hmm. so the minute he got me he told me from today you see from this corner to that corner this is your runway you can walk here naked you can cut walk the way you want but you're not cut walking outside so okay. if you want to cut walk showcase do it in my house so i stopped that taking those things now i have to live back a normal life that now i have to receive my periods just like any other normal girl so my periods would come very painful mm-hmm. my period would come like today if my periods are coming today so like yesterday I would have very painful cramps and then once i'm done still the pain would come back and then I would like I would remove a chunk of meat, like a chunk of meat, you know. It a bone? Would just it uh, would just a chunk. You see, like the way my ini liver, oh, the way the liver is, mm-hmm. just something like that would just that come big, out. that big. Mm-hmm. But the first time it was coming small in small bits, like cubicles, yeah, yeah. and I would be like, mm, this is normal. But it went on okay mm-hmm. until one day i remember so that it so that we take it serious i remember one day we were off work i have my periods i told my boss uh, i'm feeling sick i want to go home mm-hmm. so can i go home early yeah yeah my boss told me let me go for lunch when i'm coming back you'll go so he didn't come back so i had to stay so when it's time to go home i went changed my pad and then there's a friend of mine who had shown me how to put two parts mm-hmm. to wear two parts at the okay. same time so mm-hmm. that you don't mess on yourself eh? so i did that but even i didn't go far even i didn't reach at the gate it was already full it was already full and i have nothing to do so i said by the time i get home because it's a part maybe it has leaked a little maybe by the time i get home it will be the part will be sold so i'm like okay let's go by the time we got to half our destination we are getting off the first matatu or the first bus i just had something fall i felt oh, as gosh. if something is falling and you know it's so big and the way it's falling it's not just falling like meat it's falling and then there is a splash of blood not coming out do you know i'd want a black trouser luckily it was not lucky Why? because still i'm in black pants and people can still see i've messed myself because people can see that cloth is wet so where i was seated in the car when i just got off the driver asked me madam are you okay and i'm like yeah i'm okay why you left some blood on the on the seat on the seat on the matter to sit i'm like oh my god i'm sorry let me wipe them off just go i'll clean it That's i got sad so sad so we had to 
that we jumped in in a certain hotel there's a like, um, joint this fast food joints mm -hmm. chicken in in kilimani is it kilimani you still yeah. went to a hotel like that where we are related uh -huh. it was just opposite the chicken in galitos mm -hmm. and everything okay, okay. so yeah. we dashed in and we asked for the washroom mm -hmm. so me and another friend of mine who is older than me we went in and i'm like what am i going to do who are you with at that particular moment a lady a uh -huh. colleague mm -hmm. so i told her take my phone call mwakazi as I try to clean this mess. By that time you had uh, started dating with Mokas? Yes. Okay. That is like six months down the line now. Okay, kuna place ni mepotea. Yes. Like, uh, you first told us you were dating a certain mzungu. And we broke up. And, you and broke now I up. met my husband. Now this was, this was now later, later on. Yes. Like how Like how now, months? like six months, mm -hmm. like after trying the first time to be yeah, pregnant, yeah. the first month of naiveness, mm -hmm. if you take care of me yeah and now when i came to know that he's serious now i started trying to be pregnant mm -hmm. you're not using anything but yeah. this is not happening okay you know yeah so this is six months down the line still nothing mm -hmm. you know you start asking yourself hey am i the one with an issue or this man is yeah yeah why am i not getting pregnant because most people think once you start sleeping with a man immediately you get pregnant most Which times it happens. It happens like that, that yeah. you know. Yeah. But now for me, I was like, why am I sleeping with this guy? And nothing not using any happening. protection. We're not doing anything. And nothing is happening. Okay. You know. All right. So you guys broke up. I broke up with that guy. Mm -hmm. And forgot about I gave him back okay. an engagement ring. And you know, you go your way. I go my way. It's over between us. In fact, that divorce happened in Kasarani Police Station. <laughs> This Kasarani will show us this. Okay, let, that's now <laughs> another, story, yeah, that's right? another story. So back to uh, <clears throat> the place where now you were at Chicken Inn with your friend. Yes. You've messed on your clothes and yes. all that. You look for a washroom. Mm -hmm. This friend of mine is mm -hmm. not my age. She's like 50 something. Okay. She's a woman. But where we were living, I didn't know the direction. Taking. So you see, no, this friend of mine, mm -hmm. I told her, you call Mwakazi. <laughs> And me, let me be doing justice here. Mm -hmm. So I thought it's something that I'll go remove a pad, throw it away, and now try to look for a way of how I'm going to sort myself out. Because I didn't have an extra pad mm -hmm. with me. So she said, fine. I can't even remove my pants, like my trousers. Mm -hmm. It's so wet. wet. Gosh. So if my trousers are wet, what about my panty? I'm like... Confused. It can't be on again. So we said, I told her, do you know what? We have called Mokazi more than 20 times. It's not picking up. Mm -hmm. I told her, help me here. Help me wipe my my trouser. Mm -hmm. And me, let me try and see how I'm going to clean myself to be clean. You know, as a mom she was, she helped me. She didn't mind it's my blood. So she we took a very big roll of tissue. You know, she's busy trying to dry up the, the wetness. Huh? And me, I'm trying to make myself clean. Now we're in a toilet that has no water. So it's just a matter of wiping and throwing it in the toilet. Uh -huh. And we're like, mm -hmm. if you're caught here misusing these things, mm -hmm. it's a problem. Yeah, definitely. Do you know we stay there from 5 until almost 7 so that it can be dark, no one can see me. And then it was I, that bad. It was that bad. And the, you know, even after the after I left the washroom, I told her, see, I was carrying a big chunk of meat, like, in my you two hands. You showed like, her? Yeah, see, Why? this is what came out. Okay. Because I wanted her to understand but what I'm going through. Yeah, yeah, what I'm yeah, going yeah. through. Okay. So she was shocked. So I went to the stage and sat down somewhere and said, I'm not going to get to another matatu. I'll stay here until Mokazi comes and pick me up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Mokazi was sleeping and he had put his phone on silent. So when he woke up, and so it's dark and Pauline is not home. He called me. Where are you? I told him, I'm somewhere in Kilimani. I'm dying. If you feel like coming for me, you just come. Because I'm tired of calling you. So Makazi came very fast. He took me home. We passed by a supermarket. He bought me a very, the extra pack of yeah, pad. Yeah. Only for me to reach home, take a shower. It's like I'm in a butchery. It's like I had an accident or cut myself somewhere. No, it's flowing out. The blood is everywhere in the bathroom. I cleaned myself up and then I put my pad. Nothing was coming out anymore. I'm done with that period. It's it's done. That's like, the end. just like that. It's gone. 
and you never even thought of maybe going to the hospital. No, it's gone. Really? Gone, gone, Why? Gone. So two weeks later, mm-hmm. we are sleeping. Mm-hmm. Me and my husband comfortably. Mm-hmm. And then I feel this sharp thing. And then I feel something warm. So I'm used to feeling that sharp. So I know those are my periods. And then I just felt something warm coming out. Before I even jumped out of the bed, it was full of blood, meaty, meaty things. And Mokazi was so pissed off. And he was like, what kind of a woman are you? Why pissed you don't... off? Because he didn't understand what I'm going through. I had not told yeah. him. So but he didn't too. understand. He was like, you're a woman. You know, when you have your period, you're supposed to sleep in maybe pajamas or shorts or something. Not sleeping just like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I didn't know. And it's only two weeks. It just May. happened at that Yeah, it day. just happened. Yeah. So I felt bad and so I felt bad. So he asked me, what's the problem? I'm like, we need to go for a checkup. So he told me he has a friend, a client who is a guy now, we can go. So we went and that's when I got told. So for me, I was going for fibroids. I didn't know what was happening. Mm-hmm. So we went for fibroids checkup and I was told I have a one centimeter fibroid, three centimeter fibroid and another where smaller would, one. Where did you guess first it would be a fibroid? Because those are the signs and symptoms of okay. fibroids. Uh-huh. You see, they have the same symptoms. You already are Google Dama. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. you can't have fun when having sex. Mm-hmm. You can't do any. Okay. It was pain everywhere. Mm-hmm. So, so that whole time you hadn't told Mwakazi about anything. I even didn't know. Mm-hmm. But for me, I thought it's fibroids. Mm-hmm. So let's go and do okay. a okay. checkup. Yeah. So we went in. I was told I have a one centimeter fibroid, three centimeter fibroid, and a smaller one. So, but they are manageable. So the guy I didn't understand why I'm having such kind of flow. And then I told my mom about it. My mom told me, no, you have to look for a second option. You don't have to learn option A. You have to look for another guy and get to know what it is. So for me, I went and told a colleague of mine who is an Indian. He's a guy. And he told me, uh, I have a guy that has helped my wife so much to get a baby. I want you to try him if you're going to have it solved i'm like okay fine so we went in with my husband i told makazi he was like okay fine you want to try another again and let's go we went tried him and the first scan i was done he said you have endometriosis what so i don't know anything about endometriosis you don't even know even is. pronouncing the name uh-huh. was like so hard for yeah, me yeah. so i used to call it endo because okay. i can't pronounce the name it's so big for me so I went down and researched and everything and then you could find out what it means, how it affects women. Like in every ten you women found out more about it. Yeah, yeah. In every ten women, one must have that. Okay. Do you know when you have endometriosis you can't conceive? You can't get pregnant. So that is the day you knew all that. So this is all that came in. Mm-hmm. The only way to treat endometriosis is through a surgery, laparoscopy. So I was like, wait, so first, uh-huh. how was your reaction when the doctor told you about endometriosis? You know, now at first I didn't know about it. Yeah. So I thought it's just like fibroids. Uh-huh. But he told me so many people don't, not everyone goes through that. And not so many people know about endometriosis. So what people know it's about fibroids. So for me, I was like, ah, so it's something that can be treated. Mm-hmm. So what can we do to treat it? surgery i'm like so when he said about the surgery thing that's not where i got scared Mm -hmm. me get surgery i can't because of periods nah it's not happening Mm -hmm. so makazi convinced me Mm -hmm. if you want the best for you you want to have kids and everything you have and then the bad thing is with uh jambi we had seen her being taken to india and then to the u.s because of endometriosis she was big but now she's this tiny person who can be even carried be carried by the wind. So I was like, oh my god, it can kill. So I'm like, oh, I'll die. Because the way she was so thin, I'm like, no. I'm sure even after you maybe researching more about uh, endometriosis, you yeah. got more and more scared, right? Exactly. Because yeah. now it's eating my ovaries, mm. it's eating my fallopian tubes, it's eating my intestines, it's spreading. It's just like cancer. It's spreading everywhere in your, mm-hmm. in your body. And it's 
No, you don't know if the the stomach, the intestine, the meat is it comes and cover up like the way you see chicken fat. You see the way yeah, when yeah. you slaughter a chicken, you mm-hmm. find that yellow fat. Mm-hmm. That's how it looks like. Okay. So it's eating everything and covers it with that fatty, fatty thing. Okay. So I told Mokazi it's okay, fine. Any treatment for it, I'll I'll do. But first, we didn't even go. But no, you know, with the endometriosis, your stomach could grow big, mm-hmm. and the symptoms are like you feeling you're pregnant. So sometimes I go to work. I know what I have, but I'm looking pregnant, pregnant. and I'm telling my friends. My friends would ask, "Hey, Polly, are you pregnant?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm one month pregnant. Like, I'm big, so happy." Big. Big. And you make fun fun of it, the situation. You know, I was so much desired of having my. You know, the the bad thing about it is, eh? <laughs> sometimes it's it that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. my tummy would become big. Mm-hmm. Appetite, nothing. Mm-hmm. Vomiting as usual. So for me, I would what? think it's pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Maybe the pregnancy came and outdid this thing. Gosh. But now. I would even walk and people tell me, hey, Pauline, congrats, you're pregnant. I'm like, yeah, I'm one man. But for me, inside, and what's eating me inside, I'm not pregnant. And I'm dying to be that pregnant because yeah. I want this man to be a father. I want to try for long, Amma. Exactly. Okay. So how long was this? Uh, it took me months, uh-huh. like seven, eight months. Mm-hmm. Now, on that year, the same year we met with Mokazi, I decided, no, we have to do it. So it was, I was given an offer. It's either you take medication or we do a surgery. So I said, whichever comes, I'll do. But the one that is going to clear this thing yeah, out yeah. of me completely. You are ready for anything. Anything. Yeah. So we did a surgery. Mm-hmm. On 25th December, remember, in 2016, people are busy celebrating. Mm-hmm. And me, I'm in the theater. Mm-hmm. And are going, ah. Okay, we thought it's a one hour, two hour thing. But it was an intense seven hour operation. What? Just there, I was done my thing. It was, it's called laparoscopy. You just cut an inch, 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 inch. You just have four cuttings. Just a bikini cut. Yeah, and they do their own thing. Okay. So I now went my surgery and everything. No, though the problem was now the follow up, the medication, each and every After time. After now the surgery. Yes. Because mm-hmm. you have to take expensive medication. You're told to buy a certain drug. It's two five for one, and you have to take it for thirty days before you okay. go for your next. Gosh, mm-hmm. you know. So I had to treat like that. So expenses we started becoming like all the time. It's medicine, medicine, inserting. No, I even became moodless. Sometimes even Mokazi would tell me like, you know, he wants his right, but now I'm like, not even when I'm having sex, but I'm not going to get pregnant. Like, what for? Mm-hmm. So let's just have fun. So things went like that until one day I'm like, no, I have to stop taking medicine. I don't want any okay, kids. Wait, so uh, during this whole period, mm-hmm. how were you? Uh, your periods were still the same way? Heavy? No. Uh-huh. After the surgery, my period reduced. Okay. But first, before that, I was given a job that will restart, like jumpstart my period, my system again. Mm-hmm. Like a new way mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so i was given a job like it acts like someone who has menopause mm-hmm. flashes you're feeling hot you're mm-hmm. feeling cold you, you don't know yourself you're confused you have mood swings you're everywhere so i had to have that job for three months so my periods for those three months was not it was just coming like kidogo kidogo like every day i have my periods like the whole month mm-hmm. for three months then once it was done you now my period started coming for two days gone three days gone so I started becoming happy because before I would have a period for like a week or two. Yeah, yeah. But not having periods for two days and it's done. You're happy. Mm-hmm. So I went on like that until I said I'm not going to take these medicines again. It's one year taking medicines. This month That's I'm having this. Time. This month I'm having this. And still we're going to the gainer. Mm-hmm. Now it happened that now my gainer said we have to track. No, not the first gainer. No, this is the second. We have to track your ovaries. For you to be pregnant because once you conceive immediately you know it's believed once you have a surgery for either fibroids or endometriosis you have chances of getting pregnant immediately mm-hmm. but me and my husband because of the pain i was in we decided to hold for six months before getting pregnant mm-hmm. which never happened so mckenna said we have to try have you ever felt like you have organized what do we call it what? organized 
sex mm-hmm. like at this time yeah so the game mm-hmm. tells you on wednesday at 12 45 you need to be doing it really so my husband wherever he is and wherever i am we know that by 12 45 we should It's be like there doing schedule. exactly mm-hmm. hey we did it we did it we did it and then hey, it's not working so again i told us no next month because i'd go for my clinic once my periods start the first day of my periods and the fourth day of my periods or the last day of my periods so that he can no no estimate when is my ovulation So you are to now you know what you have to do you have to stay out of work for a week and you makers you have to stay out of work for a week you people you have to stay in the house watch movies <laughs> be friends is it like the way dogs Bye. dogs fine <laughs> like the way dogs mm-hmm. so we had to stay at home so i didn't go to work for a week makers didn't go to work for a week so you're staying there with makers we were forced to be happy even if you have issues we have to be happy mm-hmm. it doesn't have to make me sad because my mood swing I'm a woman we have to eat well and everything so we'd like most of the time stay naked in the house and I'm like for it was you are you know <laughs> like any time can uh, you do I can you, imagine you like that the way experience yeah. I used to feel bad because mm-hmm. you're told you can do sex just minimal mm-hmm. but on Wednesday yeah 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 that whole day keep doing it How do you know in the morning afternoon lunch dinner, dinner anything babe you have to make sure you you have to arouse yourself we are not here to feel good yeah yeah you're not here to it enjoy. has to happen it has to way. happen even if it's sleeping you have to force it in it was the hardest days of my life after one you get on because i'm not doing it again i'm done mm-hmm. then you know no my psychology is telling me you know Pauline you're not pregnant people are getting pregnant you're not pregnant even if you're doing it you'll never be pregnant okay and let that, me ask something else mm-hmm. did you maybe uh have any pressure from maybe your parents or his parents or maybe from other people asking you why you're married but you're not uh you're not getting pregnant i had pressure mm-hmm. not from my cousin my mom was asking me why you're not getting pregnant In fact my mom was asking me oh you don't know how to do it i can show you and you're like mom really mm-hmm. and even you would call me mokas and ask us oh you people you don't know how to do it we would laugh my mom was my mom was so crazy but my mom mm-hmm. was feeling affected because the rest of my family they have three kids i don't have even a single you know mm-hmm. so my mom was feeling like bad you know to her it was it was something bad But for me I was caring less because Mokazi has kids. I have to take care of Mokazi's kids. Mm-hmm. And Mokazi did not give me stress. So it got to a point now when my friends started attacking me and telling mm-hmm. me things. I came and thought, "Oh, so my husband is not giving me pressure that I don't have a kid because he has kids." Mm-hmm. So even if he doesn't say kids with me, he's already satisfied. He has other kids. You know. Yeah. I hope you guys are still following. You've told us about um what happened to mm. with your friends what they were telling you about uh what were you saying my friends were telling me no if your husband has kids you don't have to get kids mm-hmm. so it was a nightmare for me i stopped everything i said i'm not going to try i'm not going to try to get pregnant i'm not taking any medication i'm not doing anything i'll just wait for god's time to happen okay so and i forgot about it for how long did you take the medications And I think try I, all I, that. I took medications for three years. Three years. Three years. Continuously. Yes. What? Very, very much dedicated. Mm-hmm. And it was expensive. And then I jumped to another foolishness of taking traditional herbs. That you're told you need to take some water. So you what? I took those those, those from, remedies yes. are online. I took them. Nothing happened. Mm-hmm. And I told my husband. The day I'll ever get pregnant because of all these hormones for three years I've been putting in my body, we'll have six kids. Six kids. Yes. So for me, I'm done with everything and don't want. So we left everything at that, and we said God's time is always the best. Okay. So how did it happen that now you got pregnant three week three months ago? Yeah. No, that is ten. Years down the line. Ten years later. Exactly. Me and my husband. In fact, even we didn't have pressure. I'd even forgotten about kids and Gosh, everything. Uh-huh. So me, I just told my God, God, 
make me a Hebrew, Hebrew woman. I want to be a Hebrew woman. Mm-hmm. And that story ended there. I didn't even bother. I forgot about it. No, even I was seeing people pregnant now. I would say, ah, she will feel pain. Me, I'm better. I'm not feeling pain. So the thing that even was making me feel scared or even feel stressed, it's you. Mm. To be honest, no, I saw you, you're pregnant. <laughs> you were small. I'm like, uh-huh. oh my God. <laughs> Fell will feel that pain. Uh-huh. I was feeling, honestly, I was feeling for you. Why? Why? It's not, okay, was it a bad experience? No, it was not a bad experience. Mm-hmm. But now I'm seeing you, you're pregnant. You're too young. You're pregnant. I'm not pregnant. But now I was feeling massive. The, the way we hear people say, giving birth is painful mm, yeah yeah so i was it. feeling you mm. i'm like oh my god Phil. she's young and she's she'll feel the pain but okay yeah, back, back to, to, back to pain. you <laughs> no you see back no you, you said that one uh-huh. no, i was feeling for you yeah. i didn't know mm. at the same time i'm pregnant what really so my fears were for you i didn't mm. know i'm pregnant but then me at not, that time yeah at that time mm-hmm. you know so instead of me being fearing why well, i will feel pain no i was feeling for you my emotions were on you then mm-hmm. on my side. Yeah, I understand. So I didn't know. I would stay the whole night up, but in the morning, the sleep would come. I'll sleep for God. I forget to go to work and I'll just sleep for one week, two weeks. And then my friend is telling me, You look so pregnant. Are you pregnant? I'm like, I've been trying for 10 years with medication and everything and experts. I never got pregnant. Not now. She would tell me, Ah, Pauline, you're looking like, you look bad. You just look like a village woman you look pregnant i'm like no so one day we tested she forced me susu here we have to test with you mm-hmm. so i did that because when we tested and it came positive i just got shocked and even the fears i had for you finished and i started even becoming not confused mm-hmm. so i carried my pregnancy very well but the first month i was given a bed rest because now the fibroid was back mm-hmm. no this time it was fibroid it was so back and it had occupied the largest space for the baby. Mm-hmm. So I had to undergo a bed rest. And then later I was told, no, I'm fine. You can travel and do whatever you have to do. So for me, I traveled a lot. And now I got tired. When I was two months pregnant, it looked as if I'm six months pregnant. Because my pregnancy was showing. Mm-hmm. So I had to stop everything and just now start life like a mother now, you know carry my pregnancy and everything. I was getting tired of not even chewing. I'm tired already. I don't want to eat. I don't want anything. And now fast forward, I don't know what happened. So uh, during that pregnancy, did you have maybe any other complications? No, I uh-huh. didn't have any. Mm-hmm. I was very much okay. But not me being a endometriosis victim. Mm-hmm. The gainer was so conscious of me a lot. So I was told, do this, do this, eat everything, but do exercise, do this, be careful, don't overwork yourself, don't stress yourself, don't do this, because once you do it and you know you're an end of person, it can come out. Mm. So I was so conscious, I was like a baby. So if I don't feel like doing something, I won't do. Okay. So I started getting tired. We got to the clinic, the baby is fine. But I don't know what happened on when I hit my eighth month. My water just broke. Mm-hmm. And that's how my baby came as a preterm. Okay. So I delivered my baby at 32 weeks, three days. But he, he or she? He. He is okay now, right? Very okay. Yeah. Having stayed in the hospital for 21 days mm-hmm. in the NICU, that is neonatal intensive care unit. Yeah. Having a preterm is not a joke. It's the saddest part of my life, but still it's the happiest part of my life because I learned okay. and I appreciate now. Um, I'm a mother. Yeah. Um, it yeah. A, at least it has a happy ending, this story, exactly. right? Yeah. So before you had said, uh, once you get pregnant, um, if you got that chance, mm-hmm. you would maybe get six babies. Do you still want that? I don't want any other baby. So Why? when I told my, <laughs> when I told my God, I want a baby, mm-hmm. I just told my God, I promise the baby I'll get, I'll bring my baby to church. My baby will know you, my baby will serve you, and my baby will preach your word. So God, take your will. I just only want, you know, now you don't want to start telling God I want three babies and you don't have one. Mm-hmm. So I only want that one. Okay. 
and God had my plan just give me that one. That one baby. So now you would say you are contented. Very much. Even if he decides not to give me another, mm-hmm. I just appreciate because I asked for one. But you would want? Uh, depending on how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But if I get another, mm. it's okay. Two are enough for me. Okay. Yeah. So I'm so happy for you. Thank you. But you really went through a lot. So I would say you are really a strong, strong woman oh, for you. enduring all that. Uh-huh. So maybe what would you want to tell um, as we wind up? What would you want to tell maybe other women going through the same thing? Because it's not that easy. I would want to say if you have your flaws, I mean, if your periods are different, they're not the normal way, just consult your gainer on time. In fact, I would like to tell women, if you hit 20, start going for checkups. Look for a gainer and start your clinics or checkup early because you mm-hmm. never know. For me, I thought it was fun, mm-hmm. drinking all those things I was taking to regulate my periods. But for a woman, please, get a gainer, go for checkups, and two, be smart and eat clean. So guys, I hope uh, that story inspired someone out there and uh, maybe you've learned a thing or two. Don't be assuming things, you know, especially things to do with your health. As a woman, it's very important uh, that you put things in mind. And uh, yeah, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm going to see you in my next video. And also, Pauline has a channel, so maybe you guys can go and support her. Uh, what's that the channel? is Mwakazi's family mm-hmm. channel, yeah. Okay, so guys, I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.